All right, guys, welcome back to the Clack Shack. And today we're going to be doing a few stainless tumblers. So stick around. Got an assembly line set up. I've got my tumblers unboxed. Got them, ser got them marked up with the Sarah Mark spray. And we'll be turning out some uh, plain stainless steel tumblers. But we're going to be engraving a logo on those. Oh, and as a bonus for this video, I'm going to go into. If you have these, like this is my calibration cup, I guess you could say. This was a test cup. Tried several different variations, just trying to get the texture on the burn exactly the way I wanted it. And to make sure that uh, everything was, especially with the Ceramark, making sure that it was going to bond like I wanted it to and getting my settings dialed in. Well, I know a lot of you are like, man, you've wasted that cup. But if you'll stick around to the end of the video, I'm going to show you that this cup isn't wasted. Uh, by the time I'm done with it, I'm actually going to increase the value of this cup uh, and I'm going to still be able to, to sell it and maybe even sell it quicker than I could if, if I left it like it was. So stick around at the end of the video and we'll go over that. Hey guys, one thing else that I do want to go over before we get started is recently due to the uh, growth of my channel, I've been recommending, you know, the products that I use and, and telling folks uh, the sprays that I use, the tumblers that I order and, and, and sharing my settings with people. And I got to thinking about it and I had a company or two reach out to me about joining an affiliate program and it got my wheels turning. And so... I have signed up for the Amazon's uh, affiliate program, associate program. And so I'll be, the links that I share in the description of my video, I'll be sharing the links to this stuff. If you click that link, it'll take you directly to the products that you see here on the table, the stuff that I'm using. And uh, if you order it through that link, I'll get a reward on the affiliate program or associate program, whatever you want to call it. I'm not... Uh, it's not judging, it's not changing the way that I feel about it. I'm gonna be honest with you about the results. You're gonna see the results. You're gonna see how I go about doing it. I'm gonna explain it to you. So uh, I'm just trying to, if I'm gonna be giving them free advertisement, I figure I might as well uh, take advantage of the stuff that everybody else takes advantage of and try to get in some of that, uh, some of that money to help finance a little bit better camera equipment or whatever later on maybe. So, but that's, uh, if you see those links, that's what that's about. I just, I've been putting the, the links for folks in the description just to help y'all out. And it just dawned on me the other day that uh, other people are doing this and I'm not. And so I'm trying to catch up here. But this is a spray that I use. I started out with the small bottle because when I first started using this stuff, I, I tried the all the different things that are out there. And I, I've tried the airbrushing, the, uh, the water-based paints. I've tried brushing on the water-based paints. I've tried spray paint i've tried i've tried everything and i, I kind of landed on this stuff i first i bought the, the small bottle of the spray uh, it was like 20 something dollars i tried it out it worked i liked it and so i've been getting the, the bigger 12 ounce cans now it's a little pricey but if you use it the way i use it which is basically just a good layer to where you can't see the cup let it dry and then go over it one more time with another layer of you know about the same and then burn them it works good it'll actually do a lot of tumblers and so you can get you know you can get your money's worth out of it but that's the spray is ceramark and then these tumblers as you can see they come from amazon as well uh, uh i'm going to put the links in the description so if you want to if you're interested in that if you want to try to you know do this yourself you'll be able to get the exact same uh parts that i'm using here so well, I'm going to move over to the laser, and I've got everything set up. I'm fixing to start turning these things out. I'm going to kind of walk you through the process of how I do it and uh, just show you that it does work. And if you have any questions, feel free to drop it in the comments and ask me those questions, or you can message me directly, and I'll try to get to them as I can. So stick around for a minute while I move the camera. All right, we're over at the laser now, and as you can see, when you coat these things, the only thing that you need to make sure of is whatever size that your graphic is, you want to make sure you've got a good solid feel with the spray where the graphic is going to be. And when you're lining this thing up with your rotary, you want to make sure you put the uh, put it in the appropriate position. 
got some ants in the shop today so uh, there may be a barbecue while we're doing this but uh for those of you that aren't familiar this is my jig that i built for my d1 and that thing is available on my etsy shop and it's handy that i currently i have the uh rotary jig on there just to make sure that my rotary doesn't move it keeps it from going anywhere keeps it from sliding and i don't have to worry about it moving on me and when i build a template and create a burn everything's lined up because the top of the, the tumbler is going to be on this line here and so all i have to do i've got a mark on my frame here that indicates to me where to pull the carriage to get my laser in the start position i never touch the laser you'll notice when i when i change these things out once i get it lined up to where it's where i want it on these I don't touch this. That way, if I've got 20 tumblers sitting there on the table, they will all have the same distance from the rim here, and I won't have them, you know, varying up and down. So I'll never touch that. All I'll do is grab it here and move it forward and back, just, just enough room to get the tumbler in and out. So I'm going to go ahead and get this guy in here, and you'll also notice this big socket here if you've watched any of my previous videos. This is what I use for a counterweight for my tumblers. I don't, I, it works. I don't see a need in changing it. So I'm still sticking with my 111 16th socket. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this guy in there. Like I said, you wanna make sure that when you put the tumbler in there, make sure it's all the way up against the, the ridge, front ridge, that's how I do it. And I'm just gonna bring my carriage back. I'm gonna line up my mark right here and I know that that is, that is gonna work and is gonna burn the image exactly where I want it. Uh, when I burn this one, the image should be in exactly the same location as on my, my, my test cup here. So it should look just like this because when I took this one out, all I did was slid it back and replaced it and put this one down. And so we're gonna go ahead and get started. The power settings on this that I run, because I know somebody's going to ask me, with this Ceramark spray, if you do a, you know, sweep, sweep, which I consider that to be a coat, because this stuff dries relatively fast, and you get good, good coverage, let that dry, and then sweep across, sweep across with another coat. If you do two coats of the Ceramark with a 10 watt X Tool D1. The power settings that I run is 100% power at 70 millimeters per second. So I, I, all I do is I create a PNG file in Photoshop, make the, make the graphic, make the label, whatever it is, and I bring it into LaserBox Basic as a PNG with no background. If I need to crop the, you know, because sometimes you have that white space in there, that blank space, I'll crop it down, make sure it's the appropriate size and put it on there and that's the settings that i run 100 percent power output 70 millimeters per second so i'm gonna go ahead and get this thing fired off one more tip that i will tell you and i've said this before in my other videos when framing these tumblers at the most turn your frame speed down to 50. that way it doesn't hop or try to jump or sling it it doesn't move the cup around as bad so i run 50 on my framing speed you can run it down to 40, but I'm running a 50 just because it, it that's kind of what I've gotten accustomed to. You want to make sure everything stays secure, stays, stays where it's supposed to be. Like I said, in my opinion, you can't frame too much. So I've got that frame. That's where it's going to be. Like I said, I know this because I've already done my test cup and it went where I wanted it. So I'm going to go ahead and hit start and burn this thing on there and we'll move on with the video. I will be turning my vacuum table on, so it's gonna get a little noisy. Uh, I'll try to cut the volume out in the video, but I'm gonna to try to leave the video playing at least for a, a good portion of the burn.
That's one down. I'm gonna go rinse this one off and I'll be right back. All right, let me dry this thing off so I don't drip water all over the laser. We don't have indoor plumbing here at the Clack Shack. Uh, I have to keep a bucket of water outside from the house there. Maybe one day. But the good news is I've never had to pipes freeze at the Clack Shack during the winter time. All right. So if you can see that, I don't know how well it's going to make out, but that turned out really good. I got, I got good little, good sharp edges on my graphic. You know, the edge is a, is a laser. It's not going to be perfectly round. I mean, I know I could probably put a line on there and clean that up or whatever, but if folks are that particular, we got a problem. And the problem with doing that line is if it doesn't line up perfectly, that's going to aggravate me more than that little bit of, you know, zooming in with a microscope, being able to see those uh, those cutoffs on that laser. So, but there it is. Let me see if I can get it to where you can see. Uh, and I assure you, this stuff uh, this stuff doesn't come off easy. And when I show you my little secret here in a little while on how to fix it, if you mess a cup up, you'll you'll understand the the procedure for getting it off. But one thing that I would, I would advise you that if you plan on doing these tumblers, I, this stuff dries really fast, but I would try to put it on there at least three or four hours and let it sit before you burn because it seems like if you do it too quick, it doesn't adhere as well. And I think that's because it doesn't have time to, to completely dry. So I would definitely recommend if you're gonna do them tomorrow night, just to spray them tonight, let them sit overnight next night go in and put your logo when you're applying the spray because the stuff is expensive try to make sure you don't just do the whole cup just just do the area that you need done for your for your graphic and leave the rest of it alone uh this spray does rinse off with water there's no soap required now you'll get a little bit of it on your hands especially if you got working hands like i got where you got cracks all in them but you just take and put that thing in the water and, and wipe it and rub it and the the, the paint will come off and then of course i would recommend washing it with some soap and water later but but just to be able to see the graphic a little soap a little water in a bucket works or you run them under a faucet so i'm going to go ahead and put one more up there and let it run to show you how it works and then we'll move on to the next phase of this and i have got eight of these things identical on order so that's why i've got my machine set up and i set up i run them all get them done i don't care if i stay here to midnight and then i move from there like i said if you notice i didn't move the laser head i'm just going to bring my carriage back over line it up with this little mark right here i don't know if you can see that all that is is a sharpie i put me an arrow right here i had a, a another line here that's from my other jig the ones of you that have seen my setup before i had a another jig that I, I used to use for my rope for my rotary which is this guy but since I come up with my interchangeable jig it's just a lot easier a lot simpler and just as sturdy to use this one and so I have converted uh, so that jig I guess is there in case I break this one or I don't know just decide to be nostalgic maybe but I've got the next one up I've got the carriage moved back to this line did not touch this so by not moving my x-axis the graphic on this cup will be identical to the graphic on this cup you can set them side by side measure the distance it'll be identical i'm going to confirm that i've got everything pushed up tight and go to the next one and on laser box basic i definitely if you're going to be doing an assembly line like this i definitely recommend operating from the default blue dot location and if you've looked at laser box you know what i'm talking about the blue dot that puts itself around your graphic just start from the default location because the most the, 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 the i guess the number of yetis that i have messed up by not starting in the default location is way more than i have messed up but for any other reason because if you forget to move that blue dot when you go to do the next cup it's going to mess your graphic up but if you always operate off the default location there's nothing to forget and it'll work every time 
So all I'm going to do is hit work again, and then I'm going to hit start, and we're going into the next into the next burn. There's no steps to forget. There's nothing to get distracted and 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 not do. Like I said, place the tumbler in. Make sure it's securely up front. Put my weight in. Position it appropriately. Hit start. And that's the way I like it. I like it simple and just easily repeated. And so that's the reason I have my setup the way I have it. It, it cuts down on my setup time. And the less setup time I have, the quicker I can turn things out and get things done. Because this is a hobby that I do after my 40 hour a week. So I don't have a whole lot of time to be wasting. But I'm going to turn the table on and let this one run for a few minutes. And we'll be back in a second. All right, number two is done. All right, there we go. Got two of them done so far. And I got like six more to go. As you can see, the image is uh, the same height from the lid and everything looks good. All right, I just wanted to let everybody get a little bit better look at those two tumblers. There they are. Uh, both of them come out great. I've got six more to go, but I'm not going to pain everybody with having to watch those. But there's the two that we just got through with. And I got those six over there left to go. All right, like I said, guys, these two, these turned out good. Uh, I'm, I'm, ready, I'm happy with the, uh, with the end result on these. So we'll go ahead and do the other six. But before we uh, complete the video here, like I said I just want to remind you, I'm gonna have a link for the spray and a link for these particular tumblers uh, will be in the description. So if you want to try this yourself, if you've never done a tumbler, you're intimidated by it or whatever the case may be, maybe this will help you know, give you a little confidence and, and be able to try it. But as I promised in the beginning of the video, in the event that you you have a mistake or which some of this was a mistake on my part some of it was i was experimenting with trying to bring in an svg file instead of working with a png from scratch i tried building it in light burn and bringing it as an svg and i have concluded i don't like that approach because i couldn't get the results that i wanted and i guess maybe it's because i'm so used to doing it as a png straight out of photoshop and burning it that I just it's, it's just easy for me to go back to, to doing it the way I was doing it because I couldn't get I couldn't get the the spray to do what I wanted it to it was like my power settings weren't right and so I just I got tired of messing with it and went back to my old method but a lot of you would be like man that you know that's a you know eight ten dollar tumbler that is ruined but here in the south uh, if the good Lord gives you lemons we try to make lemonade. We rarely throw things away and we recycle things a lot. And so in the spirit of the South, I'm gonna show you what to do if you have one of these and how you can kind of redeem yourself and, and not be at a loss. So stick around for just a minute while I get set up in the other corner and we'll go over that. All right, guys, I wanna show you how to go from this to this. This uh, was a similar situation where I had some test projects, some test burns, and it had, it had the Ceramark spray on it, and it was all discolored. Now, the thing that I have learned, and, and it gives it a unique finish, but I'm gonna show you how to get from, from this back to this so that you can engrave it. Now, it, it does look different. It doesn't have that really smooth, laser-finished, uh, finish on the on the steel 
it's got a little bit more of a rough rustic look to it i guess you would say but it is usable you slap a harley davidson logo on this or uh you know a, a patriotic emblem of some type or or something like that and i promise you you can still get rid of these i actually like the texture on it i think it's cool i'm gonna take and uh, i'm gonna make a clack shack one out of this and i've got another one over there that i've done the same way but i'm going to show you the tools that you need to be able to redeem these things and actually make something cool because if you if you make if you've got a mechanic in your family or somebody like that that you can you can take this and use some ceramark spray it up and put a logo on it and and make it into something that is is so unique that they're not going to find it anywhere else because you sanded it down so i'm going to show you how to get from from here to here right quick For those of you that don't own a sander, don't do woodworking, don't do uh, any kind of automotive work or anything like that, you're going to have to have a sander. Uh, as you can tell by watching my videos, I'm a big fan of DeWalt. I uh, use a lot of their stuff, have for a long time. And you're going to need, this is a random orbital sander. You don't want one that's going to make like really deep scratches and, and hit the same spot continually. You want something that's a little more random. This is basically the same kind of stuff you would use on a boat or on a car. I use it on epoxy. I use it on woodworking projects. And then you're gonna need some sandpaper. I'm gonna start with 400 grit to go ahead and, and get the, the surmark off of it because believe it or not, that stuff's hard to get off. And then once I use the 400 grit to get that off, I'm gonna go back and touch it up with a 1,000 grit. Now you can go all the way up to 4,000 grit if you want. And I may do that to play around with it one day just to see. But like I said, I kind of like the finish that I get with a thousand. So that's where I've been stopping. But all you gotta do is take your sander. And basically you just rotate as you sand I'm, I'm spinning this thing with my hand as i sand it and just back and forth back and forth you want to get the whole thing so that you don't have two different textures on it but that's just with the 400 grit uh i've got all of the ceramic mark off of it and then swap out from the 400 and go over to the thousand and that's gonna that's gonna bring it smooth it out a little bit get get rid of a little bit of the uh a little bit of the lines and it also take a little bit more material off just in case And then, of course, the last step is you want to clean this thing off a little bit. Rubbing alcohol and my magic eraser, just like I do when I do uh, coated tumblers. And just wipe that down. You're going to get a little bit of you know, residue from the sanding and everything off of it. And then, basically, this guy is not, you know, it's not got the same finish on it as it did when it was new. But it is highly uh, usable now. You could do several different things to this. I mean, if, if you were into powder coating or, you know, some of these folks, they coat them in epoxy and all that. I mean, it is, it's usable again now. And I think it actually looks cool uh, because it, it's, it's unique. Uh, the sanding gives it some unique little lines right there. And I could probably do a little bit better job on sanding this one, but you get the point. And like I said, I'm gonna take, and I'm gonna put my Clack Shack logo on these because, you know, the whole rundown and rustic look, I think that is, uh, <laughs> I think that's a good fit for the shack here. So, oh, wait a minute. Uh, there comes those birds, guys. And uh, as, as I said last video, if you don't know what those two birds right there are, you can, uh, Check out my channel and there's a video out there that says uh, what kind of bird is that and it'll explain a little bit more but I hope you uh, hope you learned something hope you got gained some confidence maybe if you've been sitting on your X tool and haven't used it 
Uh, like I said, at least this way, you can take this, throw it back in there, try again. If it don't work, I mean, eventually you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to do something because you can't sand it for so many times. But, but I mean, maybe this will give you a little bit more confidence, especially if you've got a sander laying around and you just didn't realize that you could do it. Uh, but if nothing else, it makes for an interesting cup. So, like I said, I've put some links in the description below for the equipment that I've used today on Amazon to kind of link you into it. Um, I'll probably go ahead and include one from my sander that I use and the paper that I use so that if you want to recreate anything that I'm doing in these videos, you'll know exactly where to go to get the stuff. And it is definitely getting to be summertime here in Alabama. Uh, nice and toasty in here in the, in the shack today so stick around and check out some of my other videos i'm going to get back to work making the rest of these uh tumblers so i can have them out tonight but i hope everybody has a, a good time and uh appreciate you stopping by feel free to hit the subscribe button too by the way guys we're getting really close to a thousand subscribers and i'm kind of curious to see how that'll look when i do get to a thousand so if you haven't subscribed and you like watching the videos please do so uh if, if if you don't really like the videos and you don't mind subscribing you can do that too uh but i'm trying to get to a thousand so any help that you can give me i'd appreciate it so have a good day one man's trash is another man's treasure got it working got it engraved and now i can use it